We are now joined by head coach of Iowa Hawkeyes, Lisa Bluter. We'll go straight to questions. Our first one will come from Lindsay. Go ahead and unmute your microphone and ask your question. Hey, Lisa, Lindsay Schnell at USA Today. I know that you've got a locker room full of hurting kids right now, but I think that what Caitlin has done over the last, not just week, but season has been really special. And I'm confident she's created a lot of basketball fans around the country. I just wondered how big you think it will be for women's basketball going forward for little girls to see her playing not at UConn, not at Tennessee, and that she picked a different school because she wanted to do something special and how that could help grow the game going forward. Yeah, Lindsay, you about covered all of it right there. Um, you know, she's had a fabulous season. I, I'm so proud of, of what she has done over the year. I'm so happy for her. Uh, because she loves the game and she plays the game the way it should be played. And there are so many kids that have a tremendous role model at the University of Iowa and Caitlin Clark and, and quite honestly in the rest of our team. Um, you know, we're a young team and uh, we'll be back here. Uh, that's what I told our team. Um, do not hang your heads. Um, we are extremely young and we will be back. And Again, going back to your Caitlin question, I think she's uh, somebody that a lot of kids can look up to in our state, uh, but around the country. I agree with you, Lindsay. Our next question comes from Jeff. Please unmute your microphone and ask your question. Um, yeah, just a couple things quick. Um, first of all, offensive rebounds, again, was a problem, as it has been a few times this year. And how, how much did this team, you know, you're within 10 points with five minutes to go. How, how much did you guys prove that you belonged? Yeah, I mean, the final score is not indicative of how close this game was. Um, we won the third quarter. Um, it's 12 points with five something to go in this game. And then we have four turnovers in the last five minutes. And you know, um, they did a great job of using the clock and then scoring at the end of the clock. And um, that, that's unfortunate because we, we kind of melted down that last four or five minutes and uh, really didn't show everybody, you know, how close of a game that really was. Um, and you're right, the, the offensive rebounds really hurt us. Um, you know, we did not box out. It, and, you know, that's been a, a theme for us all year and, and we've got to get better at it. And it gives us a a lot of uh, good film to show and, and work on it during the off season. Our next question comes from Grant. Please unmute your microphone and ask your question. Hi, Lisa. Uh, Grant Becker, KGAN. I know that there's probably some frustration in this moment, you know, to, to have your season come to an end. But when you look at the big picture of this year, to go from outside the projected tournament picture in November to dominating Kentucky in the Sweet 16, trading buckets with UConn in, this, or in the Sweet 16 here, um, how do you – do you feel like the the there's no ceiling for this team now and that this run helped them is going to help them in the long term to get where it is you believe these guys can go? Oh, I, I can't tell you how far this team has gone uh, come from the beginning of the year. And it was a hard year as far as the pandemic and testing all the time and having those extra responsibilities and, you know, not being able to be together at team functions like we usually are. Um, I am so proud of our young team for – navigating all of that it, it's amazing and in playing in Carver without fans I mean that's part of the joy of being a Hawkeye is the Hawkeye Nation and having the amazing fans that we have and we were you know we didn't get that this year um, but I believe wholeheartedly um, that we have just touched the surface and that this team can go farther in the NCAA tournament than uh, we did this year um, I believe that completely our next question comes from Emma with Sports Illustrated. Go ahead and ask your question. Hi, Emma with Sports Illustrated. Uh, what do you think it meant that as much as this game was obviously marketed and positioned as, as Paige versus Caitlin, you had the supporting cast on, on both sides. So, you know, for you, McKenna Warnock, for them, Kristen Williams, doing everything they did and really taking the stage here. Yeah, and it's been that way all year as we've had different people stand up. I mean, everybody knows about Caitlin, but Mc uh, Monica – you know, she only got 11 baskets today and, you know, give credit to UConn for, for keeping the ball out of her hands. But, you know, she's seven for 11. Uh, uh, you know, we needed to get the ball into her more than we did. She's been tremendous for us all year. She's been a consistent force all year. Uh, and then you have McKenna, Amana, McKenna Warnock who came out today and had a fabulous game. And she's had games like that. And, and, and Gabby Marshall, I mean, what was she from the three? I think she was four for five or three. 
Uh, four for five from three-point range. I mean, we've had, Kate Martin's done it at time. Tommy Ty Woe's done it at time. We have other pieces to this puzzle, and that's what's so fun is that we've got the anchors and Caitlin and uh, Monica, but we've got a lot of good pieces around that puzzle too. Our next quest question comes from Teresa Walker. Go ahead and ask your question. Uh, Coach, you mentioned that third quarter. Uh, how much of that, the first quarter, second quarter, when, uh, you know, Caitlin, it seemed like UConn may have been kind of focusing on her was, you know, uh, she, she wasn't getting, you know, she was getting some shots, but wasn't able to connect. How much of that was UConn's defense? And, you know, how much was the difference there in the third quarter? You know, I think the third halftime allowed us to kind of take a little bit of a breath, um, regroup a little bit. Uh, we know we didn't play Iowa basketball that first half uh, on either end, really. We weren't happy with our play. And, it, you know, I thought we third quarter we came out kind of refreshed and, and just kind of a, a better mental focus. And um, I thought we played well for the next 15 minutes of the game um, after halftime until the five-minute uh, end-of-game situation. So, yeah, I mean, UConn was putting uh, uh, denial against uh, Caitlin. We all knew that was going to happen. Uh, but believe me, people have done that during the year as well. Our next question comes from Matthew. Go ahead and unmute your microphone and ask your question. Hey, Coach Matthew Judy with Local 5 over in Des Moines. How important is a game like this kind of from a learning perspective? You mentioned you're young and kind of a measurement of where you are now and where you want to get to be. And like you said, you're young, you'll be back. What should the expectations be going in the next season? The expectations should be extremely high. I mean, that's what nobody else expected much of our team this year, but we did. Um, and we're the most important people in that locker room that believed in each other and knew that we could have a special year. And moving forward, that's just going to get better and better. I mean, our goal is we want to be in a Final Four. We want to take Iowa back to a Final Four. And that uh, is where that's where the direction that we're trying to go and that we will go. We have time for a few more questions. If there's anyone that has one, please use the raise hand function now. Our next question comes from Jeff. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, yeah uh, every, er, so much was said about Paige and, and Caitlin, and, and rightfully so. But how, what, you know, this was really pretty basketball in some stretches. I think there were 48 assists between the two teams. I mean, what, you know, as far as, uh, you know, just, um, I, I can't say the word, but, you know, um, aesthetically, that, that was really nice basketball. Um, what, what does that say about the game and the way both these teams play? Yeah, I mean, I just think coming into this, you know, everybody focused on Paige versus Caitlin. And, you know, it was never that. It was, it was you know, and I, I get it. I understand why the media does that. And if it was going to promote this game and promote women's basketball, so be it. But boy, there was some pretty baskets, uh, pretty assists out there. And I, I mean, I love that basketball where you, you know, share the ball. And, you know, we had 18, I think, tonight. Um, you know, I think we could have even had more. Uh, but there was some really nice plays, especially, you know, dumps to Monica after drives and that sort of thing. Um, you know, I, I thought it was, uh, for most part, there was some really good uh, looks offensively for us. But on defense, um, we had too many mental lapses on defense. Our next question comes from Mark. Unmute your microphone and ask your question. Hey, Lisa. Mark Freund with WHO 13 in Des Moines. Um, when you kind of take a look at what this season was and what everyone kind of battled through uh, off the floor, do you almost like the fact that you did have such a young team that had to go through all this extra stuff on the side? And, and I know you've spoken repeatedly on how good this team will be or, or what this run on the court can do for this group, but off the court to be maybe even just a little more grizzled. I guess, what are your parting thoughts on the way this all kind of played out? Well, I think it's going to make all these kids more resilient. I mean, you, you either, you know, stood up to the situation and, and, and did well, uh, like I think our team did, or you complained about it and you were upset about it and, and that occupied your thoughts. I mean, we didn't let it occupy our minds that we couldn't do what we normally do. Um, we focused on the positives, and I think that's what you have to do in these type of situations. And I'm just, I think our team navigated this so well. Um, of course, you know, freshmen don't know anything differently. I, I think that a veteran team that they had advantages this year. I think veteran teams had advantages because 
you know, they didn't maybe need that summer practice time as much. They didn't need those individual workouts as much. Um, we could have really benefited from those things. And, um, you know, we didn't have those. But um, I think the way that our team handled this situation this year, you know, I'm just, I'm just disappointed I don't get to go to practice tomorrow. I, I'm really disappointed that we don't get to do that with this group of, of, of women. Um, they have been amazing all year long. We have time for two more questions. The next one comes from Cindy. Go ahead and ask your question. Uh, Cindy Smith from Her Hoop Stats. Coach, how important is the national coverage that this tournament has gotten on TV that everyone can see these great players, great teams, um, and every game was televised? I This has been wonderful. I mean, all the games being televised instead of that whip around coverage has been just terrific. And, you know, these games today being played on ABC and um, this is good for our game and this is what we need to grow our game. Um, this is what we've been missing. Uh, people need to see what we're able to do and uh, television plays such a big important part of that. Uh, media plays such an important part of that. Um, I love having 16 teams at the same site. I really believe we need to explore that moving forward. Um, it just felt like more of a tournament atmosphere. Um, it didn't give anybody the advantage playing close to home. And so I think there was a lot of good things that we learned from the pandemic that we have to take from this and think about how can we do this in the future to grow our game. Our final question will come from Josh. Please unmute your microphone and ask your question. Uh, Lisa, um, uh, maybe you, I, I came in a little late, so maybe you were asked this, but um, with UConn, with how they shot the ball today, is that is that just one of those games where it's just you you can do all you want and it's just hard to stop that kind of shooting or did you feel there were times where the defense allowed it to happen or what what, what can you say about the, the UConn shooting and, and just just when you thought you had a run they they seem to hit a big bucket yeah they did and that's what great teams do I mean I I will say I do believe we had some defensive lapses um, but uh, I am not taking any way thing away from UConn because obviously they're a tremendous basketball team uh, that can really score the ball. But I, I know that the final score is not indicative of what this game was or how I think either coach probably felt during the game. So I, I feel like um, UConn ex did a great job scoring, but I do think that we gave them a little bit help in that area too many times today. They're, they're good players, and they're going to take advantage of any miscue or mental lapse that you have, and they did that to us. Coach, thank you for your time thank today. You. Congratulations on a great season. Look forward to seeing you here next year. Thank you. I do, too. Well, next, hear from Caitlin Clark. If you have a question for her, please use your raise hand function now. Thanks for joining us, Caitlin. Our first question will come from Lindsay with USA Today. Go ahead, Lindsay. Hey, Caitlin, Lindsay Schnell at USA Today. I'm guessing that over the last couple of weeks, especially, there have been a lot of little girls around the country who have watched you and want to be like you, want to play in the NCAA tournament like you did. What would you say to them in regards to, you can pick what school you want to go to. It doesn't have to be UConn. It doesn't have to be Tennessee. You talk, I know you talked the other day about the Blue Bloods, but what would you want to say to those kids? Yeah, I mean, the reason I came to Iowa was because I wanted to do something special, and I think more and more people are starting to kind of go that route, and I think um, that's important, especially this being my home state. Uh, this is where I wanted to go, and I know I'm in the right place. Um, this season was truly special, and I think for this team, it's only up from here. So um, I know a lot of little girls dream about going to all those blue bloods, but uh, I think playing for your home state is really something special and creating something um, is really special. And that's my goal here. Obviously, I still have three years left um, to do a lot of special things. And I think for this team, we're so young um, that we, we can put in so much more work, improve in so many areas um, that um, it should be fun down the stretch for us, for sure. Our next question comes from Grant Becker. Go ahead and ask your question. Caitlin, I know when you came in, you had expectations of competing in games like this, but Outside the program, the expectation wasn't for you guys to make the tournament, and here you are trading buckets with UConn in the Sweet 16. How do you feel like this maybe changed your guys' minds about what can be accomplished in the next couple of years, and how important was this experience to, to getting to a Final Four, a championship game down the road? Yeah, I don't think it really changed our minds just because we've always believed in each other. 
Um, that's the reason I came here because there was a true belief that we were going to make the Final Four someday. We didn't say we were going to do it in my first year here. Uh, we knew it was going to be a process. We knew how to put all the pieces together. But uh, to see what we did this year with nobody really believing in us, but we just believed in, our, in ourselves, everybody in that locker room, the coaches, the girls, uh, we just kept believing. We had some tough losses, but we just went back to work every single day and wanted to get better. And I think uh, that really showed at the end of the season through the Big Ten tournament and then obviously here at the NCAA tournament. Um, and to get where we got is obviously something special, and there's a lot to be proud of this season. Obviously, we're disappointed in the outcome today, but um, there's so, just so much good to look back on and see what we did this season. Our next question comes from Jeff. Go ahead and ask your question. Yeah, Caitlin. Uh, Coach Oriema pulled you aside. Uh, he kind of wiggled his finger and finger and had you come over um, after the game. What, what was said there between the two of you? Yeah, he was pretty much just like, you're crazy good, whatnot, things like that. And he's like, it's kind of a shame that it had to be so much pressure on you and Paige. I could tell you guys were both so antsy in the first half, which I think is kind of true. Uh, I think we were both just a little, kind of could feel that pressure in a way. Um, I took a few four shots, but I think we both kind of calmed down there in the, in the second half. But I mean, obviously it is a lot of pressure for two freshmen. And um, I mean, that's what the, those are the games you, we want to play in. Those are the moments we live for. So we wouldn't want it to change any other way. But to have him come up to me and say the things he did, he said, uh, what you've done for Iowa this season has really been something special and you have a bright future. And to hear him say that to me really, really meant something. And to take the time to, to wave me down and, and talk to me obviously meant a lot to me. And I'm very thankful for that. Our next question comes from Matthew. Go ahead and ask your question. Hey, I'm Matthew Judy with Local 5 over in Des Moines. You got to measure yourselves against one of the best programs in the country. Uh, obviously, probably disappointment right now, but what do you take, what do you learn from this going forward, and then what does that put the expectations at for the next year and next few years for you? Yeah, um, obviously, I don't think the score was really indicated how the game really ended. Obviously, kind of ballooned there a little at the end, but we really stayed with them, kept fighting, kept knocking down shots, and I think if we just clean up a few, few more things, a couple more shots fall down for us, um, a couple more things go our way, I think we're we're right there to two to four point game really. Um, and I think being so young, that just shows we have so much more to work for, but we're so close. And I think um, that's just something we can feed on the rest of the season. And, and I think that's exact or the next few seasons down the road. And I think that's what we're going to work on in the off season. Just look back, what do we need to improve and, and get better at? And I think having this off season is going to be so important for us, especially returning our whole starting five and, and a solid bench as well, um, just to improve in every single area that kind of got exploited this season. So I'm excited. Um, we're all going to get back to work. I know we're going to work super hard, and I think the future is super bright. Our next question comes from Pepper. Please unmute your microphone and ask your question. Hi, Caitlin. Um, Pepper Presley with the next. Just following up on the question about young girls, there are so many more young girls playing basketball who now know you and are inspired by you. What message do you have for them right now? Mm, thanks, Pepper. Um, I don't know. I just feel like I was that little girl um, just a short while ago. So I would just say dream big. Like that's always what I did. My parents uh, never held me back from anything that you couldn't do. And I think that's just the biggest thing. Our next question comes from Mark. Go ahead and ask your question. Hey, Caitlin, Mark from WHO 13 in Des Moines. Um, UConn, I thought really, it, it was no secret how they were going to defend you or how they were going to, uh, you know, go about this game. But what did you think of the defense that they played on you, uh, particularly in the first half before you were able to maybe get a little looser? Yeah, um, honestly, I mean, I've seen tough de defenses all year. Um, I think the Big Ten is loaded with quite a few teams that are loaded defensively. Um, they move together, they play team defense, and obviously I've been denied all year long, so it wasn't really anything new. Um, I think I took a few too many tough shots in the first half, but at the same time, I'm just not going to get too many open looks. So um, a couple more go down, maybe it's a different story. Um, but I think in the second half, I was a little more patient, obviously. Still missed a few here and there, but uh, made a few more. But I mean, obviously, they're a good overall team. We knew what they were going to do on defense. They were going to deny me the ball. and. Um, I don't think it was anything new that I've seen this season. Uh, that's what we've seen all throughout the Big Ten. And I think progressing throughout my career, it's going to be the same thing. So just learning from it and getting better and finding ways to, to move without the ball and things like that. Our next question comes from Brett Grant. Go ahead and ask your question. Uh, Caitlin, b before that Michigan game, you guys had been 
good, but you hadn't had those top 25 wins. And that was kind of the thing everyone was tracking. When's that thing coming? And then you blow out Michigan. You go on this run in March. What do you think was was the change? What, what was the progress that you guys made in the last month here? And how is that something that you can apply over the summer and into and throughout next season? Yeah, I think other than tonight, really, our defense had improved a lot, um, especially our man-to-man defense. I thought that had grown so much. That's kind of what we we had been using all throughout the Big Ten tournament and up here until this point. I know we played a little more zone today, but um, I thought we really improved on defense. Obviously, when a team scores over 90 points, it's still going to be hard for us to win, even though uh, we usually do put up pretty big numbers on the offensive side of the ball. But um, And I think another thing, we just all believed. We knew we were right there. There were so many close games um, through the Big Ten uh and those top teams that we kept playing, we kept losing by like two, two to five points every single game. Um, and it was just little mental lapses. Obviously, we were young. We didn't have much experience in end of game situations. So um, I think we just really learned from those and we just kept believing and working and we knew those wins were about to come. And I think that's what you saw here at the end of the season. Our next question comes from Jeff. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, next year, obviously, the, the hype's going to be high. The expectations gonna, are going to be high. Um, how does this team handle that? How does the team embrace that? And just your thought about the Final Four being in Minneapolis next year. Yeah, I mean, obviously the expectations are high, but that's how it was for us this year. Maybe even if the media or the outside people didn't have high expectations for us, uh, Coach Bluter's teams always have high expectations for themselves, and I wouldn't expect anything less. So we're going to work how we always do. Um, not going to put too much pressure on ourselves, and I think more than anything, we're excited to have fans back in Carver and get that excitement rolling again. Um, and I think people are just going to be re- super excited about Iowa women's basketball. Um, I think we're going to have a lot of fans in the arena, and that's that's what makes the game so fun. Uh, that's what you love to do. And then, obviously, with the Final Four in Minnesota, that's super cool. Um, honestly, didn't know that, but to keep it in the Midwest, I guess that's great. But obviously, that's a long, long road ahead before we're there. So. Our next question comes from Josh. Go ahead and ask your question. Yeah, Caitlin, uh, I, I guess uh, you might have kind of answered this a little bit, but I guess what did you guys learn about yourself at how good you guys can really be considering how we talked all year long about how young this team is, but you guys seem to show uh, potential, and then we really saw it in this last month and a half. Yeah, I think it just gave so much confidence to the girls on this team to um, – to the program, everything. I think it just shows, like, we're legit. Like, we can hang with the best, whatnot. So, I mean, more than anything, I think it's just going to make every single person in that locker room want to work that much harder and get that much better, just knowing that we're so close uh, to being with UConn 10 points away, I would probably say, um, even though the score ballooned at the end. But uh, we're just going to work harder, want to get better. Um, That's all you really can do, just get back in the gym, get better, um, be with your team, and – Honestly, this team always believes, and I think that's the greatest thing about us. Um, we never held, hung our heads uh, when we lost early in the season, things like that. We just kept wanting to get better, and we knew those wins were about to come our way. So um, I think that's what you're going to see in next year, too. I'll ask one final question. You obviously got to play in the uh, first ter- game of the tournament that allowed outside fans. So how exciting was that, and how um, hopeful that we're on the road to normalcy again? Yeah, obviously that was really special. I think there was quite a few Hawk fans down here. It was good to hear that noise again and and get back to normalcy. Obviously, it's been a long time, so we kind of we kind of I would say this isn't really a normal thing to have fans, but to get back to that normalcy, um, it's going to be fun, and I I can't wait for it. Thank you for your time today. Congratulations on a great season. Look forward to seeing you here next year. This concludes the post-game news conference. A recording of this press conference will be posted in the NCAA Digital Media Hub at www.ncaa.veritone.com. Thank you for joining us today. Have a great day.